My biggest regret is not doing it sooner. Hello, welcome to episode 214 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Kim Jeraputo, licensed in both New York and Connecticut. Kim entered the real estate industry in 2014. Discussing her transition from technology sales, Kim emphasizes the importance of building a strong sphere of influence, effective marketing strategies, and maintaining client relationships. Kim also touches on the importance of mentorship and what to look for in a brokerage as a new agent. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoy this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, let's get on with our conversation with Kim Jeraputo. I really enjoyed our conversation. And if you would like to connect with Kim on social media, I've included links in the episode description. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit. Tell us who you are and where you are uh, practicing real estate. Great. Well, thank you for having me, Michael. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Kim Jeraputo. My license name is Kimberly. Um, I am licensed in um, Westchester County, New York, as well as Fairfield County, Connecticut. Awesome. So how, when did you uh, get into real estate? Um, t- uh, 2014, the year 2014. So we're coming up on my 11th year. I was in a previous career selling technology to dentists. And it was just selling is in me. It's passion. It's I, I, I have to believe in what I sell. Um, I'm not going to just walk into a house and tell a client, you've got to buy this. You know, it has to feel right. And it and it's and it takes time. But, um, yeah, I got into it because I really just I, I, I love helping people. What was it when you you know, when you first got in, what were you looking for in uh, the brokerage that you went to, you know, to work with or, you know, how you got that start? Yeah, that's a great question. Without mentioning any names, I personally thought, you know, the one particular one in my town would be the, you know, the first one that most, you know, buyers or sellers would walk into. And at the time, the manager was like, listen, if I hire another new agent, you know, my agents will not be very happy with me. And I'm like, wow, she didn't even get a chance to know me. She didn't even ask about my background. Like I bring a lot of opportunity I'm not just a new agent that's just walking through the door without any, you know, current sphere, right, that they call. Um, So then I went to another local brokerage that was really well known for training new agents. Um, And I stayed with them for just a few years um, until it was time for me to change and, and get more market share. And I'm currently with Compass and I couldn't be happier. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think looking back on it, uh, were there anything, was there something that, you know, uh, you would maybe look at, you know, as a new agent, is there something that you would look for in a brokerage now differently than you would have before? Um, no, that's a great question. I feel most new agents want to have that brokerage to support them and to protect them and to guide them and to teach them and possibly have a mentor. Um, And I just thought by going to the number one brokerage at the time that I would have received those benefits, but they didn't even care to know who I was. So um, I do think it's, I, I honestly thought it was the brokerage that wanted me, but now looking back on it, you bring like as a as a new agent hopefully you bring so much opportunity to this brokerage it should be about them wanting you right and 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 now you should be the interview you should be interviewing the brokerage and say well let me choose which one i want so it was just it was a little it was a little different for me i thought for sure it was going to be a slam dunk and they would want me no problem but that wasn't that wasn't the case yeah absolutely and, and you you talked <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and you've talked about, you know, bringing that sphere with you. Tell me a little bit about that, about, you know, um, and I think that's, you know, a, a really good point that you bring up is I think a lot of agents, sometimes new agents uh, think, you know, I don't have a lot to bring to this brokerage, but you do, especially if you're somebody that's lived in the community 
for a while, uh, you do have a, a large network of people that you can bring into the brokerage. Absolutely. I mean, it, even if you're new to the community, um, do you have a husband? Do you have a partner? Do you have best friends? Are you are your kids in school? The teachers, the other mothers, uh, everybody is is an opportunity for you to sell a home to. So you don't have to have a really huge sphere. I mean, I did come from a previous company where I've had, you know, a lot of connections. And I thought that was a big help for me in my business. Um, and I've been in my community at that time, 15 years. So I did bring, you know, a lot, a lot of opportunity, especially with my two kids going through the school, teachers, friends. Yeah. When you, um, you know, got your real estate license and it was time to start marketing yourself, as an agent, what were you doing to, you know, let your, let that sphere know that, Hey, this is what I do now. Yeah. So that's, um, that is another great question. So, um, kind of going back to when I was saying I got my license at the same time, I was still doing my corporate job. So I was gearing up and preparing for, you know, hopefully in a year or two to just kind of run fast so I did do a lot of, um, I did a lot of email to my sphere. I set up, um, with the current, uh, brokerage, I set up what they call a CRM, a contact management system. So I set that all up, put all my, you know, cause I was quiet. I had no business. So I put all my current friends, family, relatives, clients into this, into this CRM. And I would blast out, you know, um, announcements, what I'm doing. I would do local advertisement as well in a local magazine. If the school needed some fundraising, I would be a sponsor. Uh, so I did a lot of that in the beginning, of course, set up you know a website and, and shared all that, created a new email address. And I would say within, within three years, people knew who I were. They were like, how's the market? How's the market? So yeah, it, take, it takes a while. It's not just something that you're going to get your license and get out there and it's going to work. You have to give it a lot of time. Right. Absolutely. And, and you talked about, you know, having your corporate job at the same time when, you know, when you first got started and you were getting things set up, uh, how important is that to either a, you know, have that nest egg that, you know, like, Hey, you know, this six months, this first six months to a year, I might not bring anything in and I need to be financially secure to be able to do that. Or, you know, have that, have that primary job that, you know, you're still able to, uh, focus on and bring the money in, but not lose sight and not keep kicking the can further down the road with really getting the ball rolling with your real estate career? Absolutely. I mean, as long as there's no conflict of interest with your current full-time career, that's been so great to you. And there was no conflict of interest for me. I mean, I'm selling technology to dentists and I'm selling homes on the weekend. So you want to respect that full-time job. It was truly a Monday through Friday, maybe some Saturdays, but I used my entire weekend really full force on open houses and, and growing that part of the business. And, um, you know, like you said, having a nest egg, it's going to take more than six months a, or a year. You know, I, and I say with anything, if you're going to, you know, do part time for something, you will see part time results. So I truly was working two full time careers for two years and it was it was tough, but it was certainly worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me, I, I, you, you mentioned being, you know, the sponsor of anything that maybe the school needed and getting your name out there that way. Uh, how do you think that uh you know, what kind of a role did that play into you uh, getting your name out there and, and people really start coming to you and asking those questions like, what's the market? You know, um, well, I think just having like, for example, I had um, my it, it was a, um, a a golf ship membership. It was um, a sponsorship, excuse me, for the high school basketball team. And they were doing a golf event. And um, they asked if I can sponsor one of the tees. And at the tee, there was a cardboard with, you know, um, a cardboard sign with my logo, my name, my number, and it said Compass Real Estate. And a few of my friends took a picture. I'm like, you're always around. We always see you. So um, it's just, I think it, sometimes at this point, if you don't really know if the marketing is paying off, it's not like you're actually going to get a call and say, I want a house because I saw your sign at the golf course. It's not going to happen. It's just, it's awareness. It's just keeping the local people in the town that know you that Kim is a real estate agent, Kim is a real estate agent, Kim is a real estate agent. So it does, 
it does help because it's it's like consistent mailing, right? And postcards. If you receive, you know, four or five or six or seven a year, they they know who you are. They know you by face. There are some people that say, hey, Kim, how are you? And I'm like, I don't know who this person is. <laughs> and I feel bad. I pretty much know everybody, but yeah, yeah but it does work. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the same thing, you know, like the, the personal injury lawyer, you know, I'm not driving down the interstate and seeing that billboard and say, hi, I'm going to call that guy today. It's, you know, in three months when I get hit, you know, get that, get rear-ended and now my neck hurts. Now I'm going to give the guy a call because I remember seeing him so much. Right. That's absolutely right. Or just, you know, what about the commercial when you want to donate a car? Yeah. I, I know that number. Do you know that number? <laughs> yeah. One eight hundred hundred cars for kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, it's it's the constant marketing with yeah, without a doubt. Yep. Right. So when you um, you know, when you were kind of building this business, were you primarily working with a lot of buyers, or, or did you get your feet wet and get you know a lot of sellers starting to come, uh, you know, you know, asking for your services as well. Um, in the beginning, believe it or not, I did like two or three rentals and I had two or three buyers. Um, the, the listing part didn't come for like a good year. And, um, I think that's, I think that's an earned piece, <laughs> you know, that's definitely something that, um, that takes a little bit of, of time to do. And, and I think the rental business is a great way to get involved in it because, uh, you learn a lot really fast. Um, everyone says, you know, the, the rental transaction is a lot faster than a purchase, obviously. Um, and you, you learn the forms, you learn the process, you learn the systems, you know, um, faster and you get paid quicker. So, um, and you, and you don't really turn down that kind of opportunity because a rental can turn into a purchase one day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like what you said there. I was just about to bring that up is, you know, so many times I hear, you know, that, people don't want to spend the time on the rentals, but you never know what that person's situation is going to be like in a, in six months to a year. And if you were the one that helped them go through that process of, of renting, you know, the home or the apartment or whatever it is uh, that, you know, and you keep up with them, especially if they're definitely more likely to use you in the purchase of their next home. Absolutely. Agree. And, and, you know, a lot of um, marketing also doesn't just come to, marketing yourself, but then you have to stay in touch with your clients. So there's a lot of marketing you have to do after the sale. And um, I think that's, you know, that's important. That's hard to do because a lot of, a lot of clients are not, um, excuse me, a lot of agents are not organized. And if they're not organized, then, you know, how are they staying in touch with their, with their current clientele? So there's, there's a bunch of different things that you can do, but that's just as important because there are statistics where most you know, clients, most sellers stay in their home maybe five to seven years. And are they going to remember who you are? They will remember who you are if you keep visiting them and, and staying in touch with them. Yeah. Is that something, you know, understanding that aspect of marketing, did that come with your experience, you know, with the the dental sales and, and knowing that, you know, the people that you uh, maybe sold a piece of technology to, you know, th that was not a, a one and done relationship. It's, you know, that constant, you know, checking in on them and making sure that, you know, they know who you are so that when the next piece of technology comes around. Uh, that's, that's absolutely true. Yep. My, as I said, I've always been a salesperson at heart, but I've also been extremely organized um, and very customer service driven. And it definitely, that, that, that part of my business definitely helped me be successful in real estate for sure. You know, and I think that's important, honestly, like I'm I'm a very I'm a very warm, you know, caring individual. So when you're spending all this time with a buyer six months, a year, it doesn't matter. Then all of a sudden, you know, you find them their home and you're cut off. And I'm like, I'm not going to see you again. Like, this is not OK. So I always say I would like to be invited to your housewarming party and let's stay in touch and you know, if I'm going to do customer appreciation events. So it's important to stay in touch. It's important to just check in and say, hi, how are you doing? Try and remember the annual um, house purchase anniversary. If you can send them a text. If you know they're getting married next year, put the wedding date in the calendar and check in with them. 
it's easy to do. Just put it in your phone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, was, I wanted to ask you about that because you said, you know, being organized is, is definitely one of your strong suits. So what, what do you do to, have, you know, keep all that information available? And maybe what are some of your tips for people that might be listening to this? And like, you know, I really need to, to get on the ball and I need to have a system to where this isn't, you know, kind of a chaotic mess and I'm, I'm hitting it, <laughs> you know, when I, when it pops up into my head. Well, that's where I have to give Compass the plug here. You know, they, they have it in their systems. They're an extremely technology-driven company. And um, because of them, I just go right into my CRM where my client is already um, um, has been entered already into the system. And if I don't put the important data into it, then I'm not going to get anything out of it. So I'll put the anniversary date in there. I'll put their birthdays date, their birthdays in there, their kids' names. And, um, the system just automatically reminds me that there's an anniversary date coming up. There's a birthday coming up. So you've got to put into it what you want to get out of it. But the systems that my brokerage has is amazing. And sometimes I'll just put my own separate little reminders into my phone as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love what, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, you, you get into it, what you, what you put into it. And I think that's with any, with any tool, you know, you can have the, the best piece of technology or, you know, whatever listing or lead generation tool it is. But if, if you don't use it, you know, it's not going to do anything for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much, there's so much to do. I also work with an outside source that sends, um, I think every six weeks, a magazine to my clients and my pictures on the front of it, a little thank you letter is on the inside of it, almost looking like I'm the editor. Um, there's a thank you for your business on the outside. And then it's all kind of like, you know, do it yourself kind of advertisements throughout the catalog, maybe little, um, recipes with my picture and my name on it. So it's another, you know, awareness of staying in touch with my clients. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, beyond, uh, those types of like that type of, uh, past client marketing, what are, and, you know, reaching out on the, the, the birthdays or home anniversaries. You talked about hosting uh, past client events. Is that something that you uh, have, have been doing? Um, I did one event at our office last year. We called it um, Sip and Shop. It was like a holiday boutique. So we did invite all our clients and so did the rest of the office. But I have not done an individual event yet. And that's something I'd like to, I would like to do. Yeah, it can I, be costly. So you have to get some vendors to help offset the cost. Right. Well, and I, and I like, you know, you talking about that it was something that the, the whole office did together is, is your particular brokerage. Is there a lot of, um, uh, you know, camaraderie or even just collaboration with, with things and not so much, you know, the siloed off, uh, approach. Absolutely. Part of, um, one of our, um, statements for compass is, you know, collaborate, you know, without ego and, um, you know, just work together and, you know, dream big. And, you know, Compass is very big on that. So if you come across an agent within our brokerage that is just not supportive and helpful and doesn't want to share, you know, that's not, that's not in our real house. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, just even simply marketing each other's listings, you're widening it out to so much more people that can be the potential buyers and help, you know, uh, not only help you get the, the, the home sold, but it, you know, it's just going to make your brokerage look so much better if, you know, those sellers can say, Hey, you know, Kim with compass, she had so, you know, such a great pool of people. And it's because of all the other agents in their, you know, in the brokerage that has, uh, this great pool of buyers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Totally agree. What, so starting in, uh, 2014, obviously, you know, we had went through COVID and everything like that. How did that change the way you did uh, real estate? Well, I think for all of us, whether you, you know, well, if you just got your license, then you were really depressed. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was completely shut down, right? So here I'm going along, plugging along, doing well. Then all of a sudden for everybody, well, most people, except if you had the essential business, but we were not considered essential at the time. And it was just a complete shutdown. And it's scary. It was absolutely scary, right? Like all my eggs are in one basket and this is my only job and I'm not get, bringing in any money because I'm not allowed to open houses. And then when they you know, opened the world a little bit for us, then we were able to do 
you know, video showing. So the buyer couldn't come, but the agent was allowed to go to the house and we could FaceTime them. You know, it was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. Um, but you could then at that point as a real estate agent, if you weren't organized and you weren't prepared and you didn't have a good contact management system and you needed to work on your marketing and start updating your client base, that was the time to do it. Um, and that was the time you had no excuse. So, you know, that was the time to fix it, correct it, add it and do what you need to do. I also always wanted to be licensed in Connecticut. It's a reciprocal state. So they have the reciprocity and I had zero excuse. I'm like, well, this is the time to do it. Work on it and get it done. So I also received my second real estate license in Connecticut. Um, and then once the world opened up, then, you know, the floodgates. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was yeah. busy. It was crazy. Right. And, and then, you know, throughout that time, you know, obviously the markets <laughs> went crazy. Like, it, you know, it was so hard for buyers to even get into a home because the waiting list to go into an open house were crazy in, in certain places. Um, and then, you know, things kind of cooled off and maybe, you know, markets have changed, you know, over this time. What's it been like and how have you, um, you know, communicated all of these you know, changes and keeping your clients uh, informed of what's going on with the real estate, uh, you know, market to maybe, you know, so maybe they're not getting uh, misinformed by some things that they might be seeing on TV or reading in an article. Sure. I mean, we try and, and tell our clients who do get a little nervous, we're like, listen, you're hearing that nationwide. <laughs> yeah. You know, we need to dubbing it down to our area, our local area. I try, if it's negative news, which what has been happening, you know, with with the um, class action lawsuit, I try not to focus on that because I've been around long enough to know, regardless, whether it's real estate or any other news, that's today's news. And a week or two or a month from now, there's something else that's going to take that away, you know, and, and, you know, possibly, you know, in November with the election, everyone's going to forget about our lawsuit. And I don't, I don't want to focus on the negative. If they have a question, they know I'm here. They know I'll answer it. They'll know I'll protect them and always do the right thing. I, I do a, a monthly newsletter to all my clients. So I'll put a lot of positive stuff in there about the town, what to do, where to go, and maybe a little bit about real estate. But, um, you know, if it's interest rates, you know, everyone knows that's dropping now. And that's always, you know, a good thing. But that's also going to bring more buyers, more competition. You know, and I just try and let the my clients know who are interested in purchasing that the longer you wait, the more buyers are going to be interested in the same home. There's certain times of the year where you should, you know, see, you know, less buyer pool. But I, I try and inform them either through, you know, a, a monthly newsletter. Again, I don't want to focus too much on on news and and real estate um, gossip because yeah. it could be really negative. Yeah, absolutely. And I think by, you know, doing those newsletters and providing that just constant, you know, being that constant source of, you know, valuable information, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lawsuit or whatever, you know, it, I think the main focus that any agent should have is just focus on providing, you know, those buyers with the, the best possible, you know, uh, experience and then the, the best, you know, the most be the most informed and give them the Absolutely. most information. And I think all that's going to work itself out because I can't imagine a world where uh, buyers don't have, you know, representation from real estate agents. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, there's a lot we provide, you know, Compass actually put together, I think a top 50 list of what buyer agents do for their buyers. Um, and we have to remember, right? We, we have a license, right? So we have a fiduciary duty and it's to uphold so many things for them. And, and if we fail there, then we, then we failed, right? So if I have a client that's interested in a property and it, I see physically there's four bedrooms, but it says three bedrooms on the property card, you know, we need to discuss this. We need to talk about this. I don't want them to overpay. So, you know, there's a lot of things that we do to protect our clients before, you know, they, they invest in a home. And if your agent isn't doing that, then time to interview a new agent. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and I don't, I don't want to keep you uh, too long because I know you, you recently got this closing. You got to go out there and get that check. So that's awesome. Uh, but I do want to ask you, um, you know, what, this last year, I, when we were talking before, um, you know, when we first met, you know, 
you had mentioned uh, wanting to get more involved in in the podcasting, things like this, and getting your name out there. What what made you want to do that? That was one of the, I don't want to say things, but that's one of the topics that I've wanted to work on for myself. Um, I had to think outside the box and I reels and videos is what everybody is saying that real estate agents need to start doing. And I figured maybe if I can communicate with somebody else, because I really do like to talk <laughs> and, you know, I feel comfortable sharing what I know. It's easy to talk about what you know. Um, so I thought maybe a podcast might be, you know, um, a nice way to, you know, bring myself into feeling comfortable being on camera, seeing myself speak. It, it, I think it's scary for everybody, but um, I know it's, I know it's the next phase of our business. And I think that's where, where it's heading. And I don't, I don't want to miss out on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there are so many different ways to do it now. And uh, you know, the, the podcast style you can, you know, in the way that you can repurpose content mm. is so great. Now I mean, it was, I recently uh, was speaking with a, a a kind of a, a content agent in the agency and they're actually they're based out of Australia but what they do is they they just do interviews with their clients and then they take those snippets and that what that's what turns into the uh, the content that the agent can then put on their social media and I think those are great things that you could even do with somebody in your brokerage just set up a you know a zoom call or a, you know use any kind of uh, you know uh, video recording software out there and do the same thing and, and you know, idea. talk about your, talk about your local market. And then you can that's start cutting idea. those, you know, 60 second clips that you can post out. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for that advice. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I'm trying, Aaron, Aaron, uh, he is out of Australia. It was a fascinating conversation. I was like, man, that's a really great, I mean, I do it every week, but, uh, yeah, you know. yeah right. Right. <laughs> But, so I can take a snippet right now of us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what, I mean, it's, that's the great thing about the way content has worked out, you know, over the past, you know, several years with, you know, all these different technologies is you can take that one interview and you can turn it into a blog and multiple emails. You can turn it into, you know, uh, social media reels, all kinds of different things from that one, you know, maybe 15 minute conversation. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's smart. Yeah. Right. Cause nobody is going to listen. I, I what do they say after like, of 10 minutes they're bored they're just going to move on yeah i mean it's it you know and it's even great you know just being able to you know get that hit those wider audiences hit those different platforms you know take that one thing that you've you know that you spend that one moment of time to record the content but then you can send it to so many different platforms rather than trying to repurpose the script and reshoot mm -hmm. it for that one mm -hmm. you know that one style. And, um, and I think people also, you know, the, the viewers and the content consumers, um, you know, my background was in video production. I was super into like the high quality, you know, video production. And then I realized, you know, people are watching a lot more YouTube videos that is just a person sitting in front of their camera or the TikTok stuff. And it doesn't have to be so crazy, you know, yeah. overproduced anymore. People just, yeah. they want to be able to connect with a person that's on, on sure. camera in front of them. Sure. Sure. I get that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's very true. Yeah. Well, I think it's awesome that, you know, you, you, you dove in and you, you're wanting to get your name out there uh, more and, um, you know, kind of taking on the, the video content uh, creation uh, wave. I'm trying. How did I do? <laughs> you did great. Awesome. You did great. And, um, you know, for any, before I wrap up, uh, you know, for any new agent out there that's listening to this, or maybe somebody that's looking to get into real estate that has had a career in sales. And what is maybe your one piece of advice uh, that you would give somebody to set themselves up for success in real estate? Well, if they're thinking about it, don't hesitate, just do it. Like, you know, there shouldn't be a reason to wait. I mean, yes, you have to take the class. You have to pass the state exam. It might be different in, in other states. I'm specifically talking about New York. My, I mean, I know you didn't ask me what's my regret, but my biggest regret is not doing it sooner. And I'm telling my 20 some odd year old kids, get your real estate license now. Don't like, I regret not doing it earlier. Um, and the one piece of advice I guess I can give them is find a mentor, you know, 
find find someone who's willing to spend the time and teach you and shadow you and and go out with you and and just kind of show you the ropes. I mean, I, it's not easy doing it on your own. Compass is very big. Um, they're very team focused and very team motivated, which is awesome because we always pair people up and, you know, I'm looking to grow my team as well. I don't mind bringing on a new agent and showing them the ropes. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's hard to do it alone. And you really want to make sure that you, like I said earlier in our, in our uh, call, make sure you interview the brokerages and find out which one you're comfortable with. Where do you see yourself as an individual, do you fit with this brokerage? Do you pair with this brokerage well? Uh, do, can you see yourself getting along with these agents? So I think it's okay to interview a few brokerages before you make the decision, but get your license and don't wait. Yeah, absolutely. And I 100% and I agree on uh, interviewing the brokerages because I I also, I'm a big proponent of finding a mentor and finding somewhere that's going to provide the training and not just, you know, here's our, here's our company handbook, but really, yeah. you know, hosting, you know, whether they are weekly or monthly masterminds or just, you know, uh, empowering a culture of agent collaboration, I think is so important, especially for new agents, um, kind of learning the ropes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Agree. And someone to go to, somebody to ask questions. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it again, Michael. Um, and um, I'm Kim Jiraputo with Compass. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things. Uh, where uh, where can people reach out to you if uh, they're, if they're interested in this and uh, want to hear more? Maybe follow you on social media as well. Sure. My Instagram handle is Kim Jiraputo. Last name spelled G-I-A-R-R-A-P-U-T-O. Awesome. Well, we will definitely put that in the episode description. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I want to thank Kim for joining us today and love what she had to say about the value even brand new agents bring to a brokerage. Remember, if you would like to connect with Kim on social media, I've included links in the episode description. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.